Hoy es viernes, yo soy Rory, estoy contento de estar aquí contigo. This feels like the first real day back into the swing of things with you since our, um, since my trip to um, Costa Rica for the Winter Immersion Program. But uh, anyway, it's Friday. Hope you have some fun plans for this weekend. Uh, I do. Leslie and I are going to get away for the weekend. So we've, we don't, she doesn't know where we're going. It's a surprise. Um, and uh, we, we try to do it, you know, once a quarter or so. First quarter, we're usually pretty good about it. Third quarter, we're usually pretty good about it because that's when our anniversary is um, going on 19 years here this year. And uh, But second and fourth quarter. Second quarter is like, this huge lead up to our summer immersion program. So we feel, uh, and you know, kids end of school and all of that. And then uh, fourth quarter, you know, the holidays, it's, it's kind of harder for us to get away. But anyway, last night we were, I was putting the girls to bed, they share a bedroom. I was putting the girls to bed and Caleb was in the bathroom just outside the girls' bedroom and he was washing his face and brushing his teeth. And the girls were trying to figure out uh, where I was taking mom this weekend. And uh, as I wasn't telling them, I was like, anywhere, anywhere but here. And, <laughs> and, uh, and, and Ileana, our youngest, says, I know where it is. You're going up to Winter Park. Caleb, our son's going to Winter Park with some friends this weekend. Uh, you're going up to Winter Park and you're going to spy on Caleb. <laughs> Caleb shouts from the bathroom, Eliana, no, when parents go away, it's to get away from their kids, not to go spy on them. <laughs> but anyway, okay, muy bien. <clears throat> Hoy estamos hablando de la historia clínica ginecológica. Okay, so uh, special thanks to Barbara. I just spent two weeks with Barbara in Costa Rica. Here she is with some ATOPS, Auxiliares Técnicos de Atención Primaria. They're the preventive health outreach arm of the healthcare system in Costa Rica in the local clinic level. So like the first level of attention. And uh, so Barbara, she's uh, about ready to enter uh, ob residency. Um, and as we were uh, sitting around talking about, you know, what's next and stuff while we were together in Costa Rica, she said, you know what, I really need to focus on some ob and stuff. Could you help me with that? I said, yeah, absolutely. In fact, I've been wanting to do something along those lines for the Video Viernes group. And so we got together this week. She's here in Colorado too. We got together this week and worked on a few things. And um, it didn't take me long to realize how much information there is here and how many different rabbit holes you can go down uh, depending on you know what someone tells you or what their experience is or what's going on. And so what I've tried to do today is just kind of uh, narrow it down to some specific initial history questions and not things that you would cover maybe in other general history questions like um, uh, I guess smoking, drug use, things like that, which would, would come up in other uh, general more history taking. So anyway, we're going to focus on ob history uh, today. So muchas gracias, first of all, to Barbara and for all of you who commented in the, uh, in the string of messages there in the Facebook group about some things that you want to uh, need to be able to tighten up as you're talking with your patients. So, okay, let's get started with unas palabras confusas. And uh, these confuse 99% of the people that I work with who are learning Spanish and trying to talk about the professions and different adjectives and things like that. So, first of all, ginecológico or ginecológico, excuse me, ginecólogo or ginecóloga. This is the profession. Ginecología is the department or the field or the specialty. Ginecológico or ginecológica is the adjective to describe something. So let's look at some examples. Usted necesita hacer una cita con la ginecóloga. You need to make an appointment with the gynecologist. Profession, profession. La ginecóloga es especialista en ginecología. So the gynecologist is a specialist in gynecology. Ginecología, ginecología. El Papa Nicolau es un examen ginecológico. So gynecological as the adjective. So el Papa Nicolau, pap smear, es un examen ginecológico. Is a gynecological exam. Okay? So ginecólogo, profession, or ginecóloga for a lady. Ginecología, the field, department, or specialty. 
ginecológico or ginecológica is the adjective, talking about a procedure or a treatment or whatever it might be, okay? Exam. Okay, another one, muy parecido. Almost everyone I know calls themselves an obstetrico, but that's not what you call yourself if you're an obstetrician. If you're an obstetrician, you call yourself obstetra. Whether you're a man or a woman, it's obstetra. El obstetra, la obstetra. Whereas ginecologo for a male, ginecologa for a female. But here it's obstetra. Male obstetrician, female obstetrician. Okay, same pattern now. Obstetricia is the field or department or specialty. And obstetrico is the adjective. Okay, so now I've taken these sentences and we'll put them in with using obstetra, obstetricia, and obstetrico. Okay? So let's take a look. Usted necesita hacer una cita con la obstetra. You need to make an appointment with the obstetrician. La obstetra es especialista en obstetricia. So the obstetrician is a specialist in obstetrics. ¿Verdad? La cesárea es una cirugía obstétrica. So cesarean section is an obstetric surgery. Okay? Bien. So these are palabras confusas in all of my years working with people. Uh, these never fail to confuse. So I thought I'd help you straighten them out. Uh, bien. Before we get on to specific questions, I wanted to share a few helpful structures with you. So, unas estructuras útiles. So, first of all, have you ever had is a question that comes up in many history taking scenarios. And so, uh, to make it really clear, alguna vez ha tenido. All right, so when we say had, we could refer to a condition or we could refer to like a treatment uh, course or something like that. We just use the verb have. Um, but in Espanol, um, it's, a, it's not perfect to use tener for all of those different contexts that we would use it in English. So you're gonna see some variations in the verbs I'm using here. But alguna vez ha tenido, have you ever had, for a condición, enfermedad, or problema. Alguna vez ha tenido um, una enfermedad or infección de transmisión sexual, uh, an STI, okay? Um, okay, alguna vez le han hecho en una prueba, análisis, or procedimiento. Now, in English, we would say, have you ever had a mammogram or a pap smear or something like that, right? Uh, but in Espanol, it's a little bit better to say, has it ever been done on you, verdad? And so, alguna vez le han hecho, and this on is plural, it's like this um, undefined they, have they done something to you? Alguna vez le han hecho any prueba, analysis, mammografia, Papa Nicolau, we'll see a list of some different tests and procedures. Okay, and then another one, kind of like this top one, alguna vez le han diagnosticado con, have you ever been diagnosed with X, Y, or Z? You fill in the blank, okay? So, alguna vez is this ever, and then ha tenido, have had, le han hecho, le han diagnosticado, okay? Bien, and then another common Frase is, when was your last fill in the blank? So, this one's a little more uh, sencillo. Cuando fue su última, it could be ultimo also. Cuando fue su última regla, your last period. Cuando fue su ultimo, there's another word for period too, periodo. Cuando fue su ultimo periodo. So, whatever word comes next, this could be ultimo or ultima, okay? So, when was your last? You probably wouldn't use pasado for any of these, okay? And then we also have how often. How often do you this or that? Um, so, one option here is con que frecuencia. Con que frecuencia, and then you'll fill in the rest of the sentence probably with a phrase. How often um, do you get your period? Or how often uh, do you see your doctor? That kind of thing. So you use a whole phrase there. 
And cada cuanto is another easy way to say how often. Uh, cada is every or each and cuanto is how much, so it doesn't make perfect sense in, e in English, but in Spanish it's fine. Cada cuanto consulta con su uh, médico de atención primaria. How often do you see your primary care physician? Okay. All right. So those are some estructuras útiles. Now let's jump to some vocabulario útil. And yeah, there's a ton of vocabulary in this whole sort of realm, but I've tried to narrow it down to what uh, is most common. Okay. And it's in alphabetical order. So we've got aborto versus aborto natural or aborto espontáneo. So un aborto as is, abortion, aborto natural, miscarriage, Another word for miscarriage, aborto espontáneo, okay? Anatomía, a few uh, specific anatomy things. Cervix or cuello uterino, okay? Cuello uterino, cuello, yes, it does mean neck, but uh, so cervix could be cervix, which is a little higher register. Many people will say cuello uterino or cuello del utero, the neck of the uterus, okay? Ovario, ovary. Trompa de fallopio, fallopian too. Utero or matriz, so utero uterus, matriz womb. Um, in most cases, you're fine using utero, uh, but if you hear matriz, that's what it is. It's not a matrix, <laughs> it's the womb or uterus. Vagina. Okay, cirugías, cirugías. Cirugía is surgery. Chirúrgico is the adjective surgical. So much like we had uh, obstetricia and obstetrico, ginecología and ginecológico, we've got cirugías and chirúrgico. Yes, it has a Q and it's chirúrgico, okay? Contraception, contraception, entre, between. So you might talk about between events or between as um, in an anatomy kind of way, something's between two physical objects, uh, but entre is your word for between. Infección or enfermedad de transmisión sexual, okay? STIs or STDs, however you use it. Mammografía, mammogram. Mammograma is also mammogram, mammografía. Um, médico, or medica, or proveedor, provider, de atención primaria, so your primary care person, whether that's a physician or provider, okay? PCP. Menopausia, menopausia. Uh, normal versus anormal, so particularly if you're talking about results of a, a test, a pap smear, or whatever, mammogram, normal or anormal, okay? Papa Nicolau, pap smear. Pareja. Pareja is a sexual partner or a life partner. So pareja sexual, you shouldn't have to use sexual for as an adjective to describe pareja. It kind of includes everything. So Leslie as mi pareja as mi esposa. Okay. Parto. Parto is birth or delivery. Vaginal or por cesárea, so un parto por cesárea, C-section, parto vaginal. Periodo, period, regla menses, all words that could be menstruation or period, okay? Protect, uh, excuse me, primer or primera, and ultimo or ultima, so primer is first, so primer periodo, but if it's regla, primera regla, first period, yeah? Ultimo, last, okay? Protección, protegerse. So protección, using protection in, in the context of uh, intercourse, verdad? Protegerse, the verb to use protection, okay? You could say usar protección or protegerse, bien? Regular, irregular, so regular, irregular, see? Could be uh, bleeding, could be periods, could be whatever, okay? Relaciones sexuales, coito, 
Uh, sexo is a word, um, and uh, I think it probably sounds just a little less professional than how you want to sound. And so, relaciones sexuales is a really clear way to talk about sexual activity. Uh, coito also is a common word for intercourse, okay? Sangrar, sangrado, and manchas. Okay, so sangrar is the verb to bleed. Sangrado is the noun bleeding, and manchas is spotting. So a mancha is any kind of stain or spot, but in this context, manchas is spotting. So if you were going to talk about any spotting in between periods, you might ask something like, tiene or es común tener manchas entre periodos or entre sus reglas, something like that. Okay. Sensible, sensibilidad, or dolor leve. Okay, so sensible, sensitive, uh, sensibilidad, the noun, sensitivity, and dolor leve would be like a really light pain, okay? Not severe. And then finally, tratamiento. Great. Okay, some preguntas iniciales for first seeing uh, your patient. ¿Qué le trae la clínica hoy? What brings you to the clinic today? Um, ¿Cómo le puedo ayudar hoy? How can I help you today? ¿Qué le pasa hoy? What's the matter today? Of course, none of this you're going to lead with, right? You're going to after all your introductions and everything like that. Um, okay, bien. And entiendo. Gracias. I understand. Thank you. Vamos a hablar de esto pronto. Okay, we're going to talk about this very soon. However... Pero primero, necesito hacerle unas preguntas sobre su historia clínica. I need to ask you a few questions about your clinical history or your medical history. Okay? So, now we're going to take this topic by topic. Our first topic, historia menstrual. Okay? ¿Cuántos años tenía cuando tuvo su primer periodo menstrual? How old were you when you had your first period? ¿A qué edad tuvo su primer periodo menstrual? At what age did you have your first period? Okay, so kind of the same question. ¿Cuándo fue su último periodo? When was your last period? Okay. ¿Ha pasado por la menopausia? Have you gone through menopause? ¿Sus periodos son regulares o irregulares? Are they regular or irregular? Más o menos, cada cuantos días tiene? So, more or less, every, every how often, I guess is how you would say that, every how often do you have your periods, yeah? Or just how often. ¿Por cuantos días sangra normalmente? How many days do you bleed normally? ¿Sangra mucho o los periodos son muy fuertes? Do you bleed a lot or are your periods very strong? Por favor, if so, descríbeme sus periodos fuertes. Please, describe your, your strong or heavy uh, periods. ¿Cuántos tampones o toallitas usa por hora? How many tampons or toallitas would be uh, pads usa por hora? How many do you use per hour? You could change that to per day or whatever the reference is for you that makes sense. Okay. ¿Tiene manchas o sangrados entre periodos? So, do you have spotting or bleeding between periods? Okay, so uh, one of the, when we say bleeding here, we're using bleeding as a noun. And one of the things that uh, I was talking about with Barbara the other day when we sat down together was when you would use sangrar versus sangrando versus sangrado, right? And so here we're using bleeding as a noun. So, tiene sangrados, ¿verdad? Other times you use bleeding as something is bleeding or was bleeding, and then that's more verby than it is nouny, if that makes sense. <laughs> and so then you would use sangrando, por ejemplo. Okay. Uh, and then, ¿tiene manchas o sangrado después de relaciones sexuales? Do you have any spotting or bleeding after relaciones sexuales? Intercourse. Historia de embarazos. Okay, historia de embarazos. So, ¿Cuántas veces has estado embarazada? How many times have you been pregnant? 
This is not embarrassed. It's pregnant, verdad? Okay. And embarazos is pregnancy or pregnancies, verdad? Bien. Todos los embarazos, por favor, eh, incluyendo abortos y abortos naturales. So let's talk about all of your pregnancies, please. Um, even if they ended in abortion or miscarriage, ¿verdad? Necesitamos hablar sobre todos sus embarazos, empezando con el primero. Okay, we need to talk about all of your pregnancies, uh, starting with the first. And so a handful of questions for each pregnancy. ¿En cuál año? What year? Uh, or ¿cuántos años tenía usted? Or how old were you? Mm -hmm. ¿A cuántas semanas tuvo su bebé? And how many weeks did you have your baby? or your abortion, or your miscarriage, aborto natural, ¿sí? So you could swap out su bebé with either of those. ¿Cómo se llama? What's its name? ¿Es varón o niña? Was it a boy or a girl, verdad? So varón is the common word for a baby boy, and then niña, nena, uh, mujer, kind of depends on the person, uh, but if you say varón o niña, that's a clear way of asking was it a boy or a girl. Okay. ¿Cuánto peso? How much did it weigh? ¿Su parto fue vaginal o por cesárea? Was your, was your birth vaginal or by cesarean? ¿Recuerda por qué le hicieron el parto por cesárea? Do you remember why they did a C-section on you? ¿Había alguna complicación con su parto? Were, were there any complications with your birth or aborto? Abortion? And so, si la señora no tiene ningún embarazo, you might have some questions about a lady who's never been pregnant uh, at a particular age. ¿Alguna vez ha intentado quedarse embarazada? Have you ever tried to get pregnant? ¿Ha tenido dificultades con quedarse embarazada? So, quedarse embarazada is another common way to say get pregnant, okay? So, ha tenido, have you had difficulties con quedarse embarazada? Have you had any difficulties getting pregnant? ¿Alguna vez consultó con un doctor? Did you ever consult with a doctor or a specialist sobre no poder quedarse embarazada? About not being able to get pregnant, okay? So, a couple follow-up questions there. Bien, moving on to historia sexual. Historia sexual, ¿tiene relaciones sexuales? Do you have sex? Con hombres o mujeres, with men or women. Las relaciones son de mutuo acuerdo or de consentimiento mutuo. This was a question that uh, Tiffany asked in the, um, in the Learning Medical Spanish group. Uh, so, las relaciones son de mutuo acuerdo. Are these, uh, are they uh, consensual? Okay. O de consentimiento mutuo. You could use either. ¿Tiene pareja sexual? Do you have a sexual partner? ¿Cuántas parejas tiene? How many do you have? ¿Usa protección o condones? ¿Usa contracepción? A few examples of contracepción, condones. ¿La pastilla? ¿Un dispositivo? IUD. Dispositivo interuterino is the long word, but everyone just calls it a dispositivo. An IUD. Parche, patch, implante, implant, okay? I know there's more, but... <laughs> ¿Tiene alguna preocupación que quisiera conversar sobre sus relaciones sexuales? Do you have any concerns that you'd like to talk about regarding um, your sexual activity? ¿Tiene dolor cuando tiene relaciones sexuales? Do you have pain with intercourse? ¿Tiene sangrado o manchas durante o después de relaciones? Do you have any bleeding or spotting during or after relaciones sexuales? Okay, now we'll move on to la historia quirúrgica. So, surgical history, okay? Historia quirúrgica. Now, there's a ton here, right? But I tried to focus a little bit more on uh, relevant uh, cirugías. So, ¿ha tenido alguna cirugía en el pasado? Have you had any surgeries in the past? ¿Dónde le operaron? Where did they operate on you? ¿Cuándo fue? When was it? ¿Todo salió bien? Did everything go okay? ¿Ha tenido alguna cirugía en el abdomen? Have, did you have, have you had any abdominal surgeries? 
del apéndice, por ejemplo, de la vesícula, gallbladder, una hernia, por ejemplo, ¿ok? O la vejiga, bladder. Y ha tenido alguna cirugía ginecológica, we had any gynecological surgeries, ovarios, útero, cuello uterino, what was that again? That's right, cervix, <coughs> vagina, las trompas, so trompas, trompas de falopio, remember, fallopian tunes, okay, bien, so some open-ended questions about have they had any surgeries, verdad? And you could continue to ask these questions, cuando fue, when was that, did everything go, okay, todo salió bien, okay? All right, historia de Papa Nicolau y mamografía. All right, bien. ¿Cuándo fue su última Papa Nicolau? And that actually should be último, because it's el Papa Nicolau. Okay, so ¿cuándo fue su último Papa Nicolau? ¿Alguna vez ha tenido un resultado anormal de su Papa Nicolau? Have you ever had an abnormal result? ¿Alguna vez ha recibido tratamiento para un Papa Nicolau anormal? Have you ever received treatment for an abnormal pap? ¿Qué tratamiento le dieron? What treatment did they give you or le hicieron? Did they do to you? Biopsia, excisión, crioterapia, láser. Um, so, biopsia, biopsy, excisión, excision, crioterapia, cryotherapy, láser. That actually should have an accent over the A too. I was a little careless today, I guess. Uh, láser. Bien. ¿Cuándo fue su última mamografía? Bien. When was your last mammogram? ¿Ha recibido algún resultado anormal de una mamografía? Have you had any abnormal results from a mammogram? Ok. Y más historia ginecológica. ¿Cuándo fue la última vez que se hizo una prueba para infecciones de transmisión sexual? When was the last time you got tested for STIs? ¿Usted ha tenido algún problema con el útero? Have you had any problems with your uterus? Y o los ovarios and or ovaries. Por ejemplo, fibromas. Quistes, cis. And I think there's one more. No, oh, no, there's not. Ok, bien. ¿Alguna vez le han diagnosticado con... Have you ever been diagnosed with... Verrugas genitales, so genital warts. Herpes genital, genital herpes, sífilis, syphilis, enfermedad pélvica inflamatoria, um, so um, that's pelvic inflammatory disease, endometriosis, endometriosis, uh, clamidia, gonorrhea, or infecciones vaginales, okay? Bien. All right, we're kind of winding down a little bit. I know we've gone fast. There were a few more questions that you all asked in the Learning Medical Spanish comment area in, in the group there on Facebook. So, uh, otras preguntas pedidas. Uh, talking about leche materna and amamantar, talking about breastfeeding. Okay? So, en una escala de uno a cinco, ¿qué tan probable es que usted dará pecho? So, on a scale of one to five, how probable is it that you will breastfeed, que dará pecho, breastfeed, or amamantará, another word for breastfeed, a su bebé. How, uh, will you breastfeed your baby? And the description here is uno sería poco probable. One would be very uh, improbable. Y cinco es muy probable. Cinco, five is very probable. Okay, next question about apoyo en casa. About help or support at home. Bien, so similar question. En una escala de 1 a 5, ¿cuánto apoyo, apoyo tendrá cuando vuelva a casa? On a scale of 1 to 5, how much help or support will you have when you return home? So again, 1 sería poco apoyo and 5 sería mucho apoyo. So little help, 5 would be a lot of help. Okay? All right, so we also had some questions about uh, consent and... Um, Harassment, things like that. So, first of all, acoso sexual is sexual harassment. Okay? And so, a few questions around that. ¿Alguna vez alguien le ha acosado? Has anyone 
ever harassed you? ¿Alguna vez alguien le ha tocado de una manera no deseada o amenazadora? So, has anyone ever touched you in a undesired way or in a threatening way? De una manera amenazadora. Okay. ¿Ha pasado alguna agresión sexual? Have you ever been through a, a sexual aggression, right? Abuso sexual, so sexual abuse. ¿Alguna vez has sido víctima del abuso sexual? Have you ever been victim of sexual abuse? And then uh, along these lines, violar is the verb to rape in Spanish, and violación is the noun for rape in Spanish. Okay, bien, well, I didn't think about it, but I kind of hate to end on that note. But um, so I'll end on this note. Muchas gracias. <laughs> Thanks for joining me today. Uh, para más oportunidades con español, head over to the website, commongroundinternational.com, and you can find other resources there. I think we're going to do a couple more in this series of OB and OB Gyn care uh, for women. So stay tuned. I'll let you know what our topic is for next Friday. Hasta luego! Hey, thank you for joining me today on this video of Yernes lesson. I wanted to invite you to join our community if you're not a member of the Facebook group already that I deliver these live lessons in on most every Friday. And also point you to the website where you can find a bunch more information about medical Spanish, whether that be courses or free materials for you or finding a private tutor to work with you online or face-to-face. And also let you know about some amazing Spanish immersion programs, either you as a medical person or your significant other as working in some other industry or your family. If you want to improve your Spanish and you have time and budget to go do some travel, our programs are pretty amazing. I think it'd be fun to work with you. And finally, if you have some document work at your clinic or at your hospital or within your setting that needs to be professionally translated, shoot me a message upload your document to us and we can get you a quick quote and help you out with your uh, Spanish language documents as well. Have a great day.